Hi, I'm an INFJ, my name is Rick, and I am happy, or I am sad, or I am indifferent. Hmm. When we explain feelings that we have, we have a tendency to associate who we are as an identity with those emotions that we're having the experience of emotions that we're having at that moment. And I think it's interesting that the words we choose to use indicate it's more of we are a person who is synonymous with the feelings we're having. I'm freaking angry. Okay, yes, I have feelings of anger. <laughs> it's probably more accurate to say, but people get it when we say I'm freaking angry because in that moment we, we are... We are embodying those emotions and representing them. You know, they're manifest by our behaviors and our actions in that moment, our words and the way we express those words will let others know, I am right now very angry or sad or happy or whatever. But if we do that too much, if we do that too often, we can fall into the trap of believing that we are a person who is angry or sad or happy. And I don't think it's a problem to think you're a happy person. But it is a problem to think that you are a consistent emotional state which is temporary. And I say that because emotions are fleeting. They are temporary. They are not who you are. Your emotions are not you. You are not your emotions. And I know for some people, myself included when I was a bit younger, I would probably not agree with that statement. I would actually react and go, what the hell are you talking about? No, my truth, I feel like the most true thing is finding my emotions and figuring out what they are and rah, understanding why I feel that way. Yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe it'll help to figure out why I feel certain emotions and I, I certainly spent a lot of time discovering emotional truths for myself um, and why those were the way they were, I guess, the source of those emotions, but they never got me to anything that allowed me to be a better version of myself, they just kept me looking backwards. They kept me looking reactively at who I've been and the experiences I've been through and defining who I am based on those experiences and my story that I tell myself that I am sad, that I am depressed, that I am lonely, that I am whatever it was at the time. And the truth is, yeah, you might be sad at the time, you might be depressed time and time again, but you are not the depression. The depression is a symptom. Symptoms come and go, and they are there for reasons, good and bad, and indifferent. And if you can't necessarily control the emotions because they keep coming back, then maybe there are circumstances surrounding those emotions that we can recognize and either accept that they are what they are, and that will help to alleviate the emotions there because you've accepted them. You've accepted the root causes of those emotions. Or we could do something to change the circumstances causing those negative or unpleasurable emotions. Simply avoiding them is not gonna do anything. Stifling them is not gonna always allow them to go away, forever at least. So we have really two choices. Accept what is or change what is. Both are a choice. And if you don't make a choice to deal with those emotions, then they're gonna come back again and again and again. And the words that you'll start using are, I am sad, I'm sad, I'm sad. I just can't figure out why I'm so sad all the time. Or ah, I'm just angry, I don't know why I'm so angry. I can't figure out the cause, just ugh, whatever it is. If you can figure out the circumstances surrounding those emotions for yourself. And maybe, it, maybe it's not something you can find within yourself so easily. You might have to ask around and, you know, get some other data to, to, to process as far as why have I always been feeling these ways during these times. Other people might have more insight because they're objective, they're outside of you. And they can see you from the outside and how you've behaved or reacted to certain emotional triggers. 
And if you can objectively look at those emotions, you can ideally accept them for what they are. Reactions, symptoms of something else going on. And often those things going on are just circumstances. It's life. And you can accept that they are what they are, reality, the truth. Or you could potentially sometimes do something about it and change your own reality and become the person that you want to be. If you don't want to be sad, how do you become the person who is content, who is joyously content and consistent in the type of emotional state they want to be? How do you do that? You just start doing the things that make you feel that way. But you can't ignore that you've been sad or else you might fall into that trap again or mad or whatever it is. So my reason for this video is to just say that the words that we choose might often indicate the beliefs that we have, the narratives we tell ourselves, the stories that we play out time and time again. And if you listen to your own words, if you listen to your own thoughts, and if you listen to your own feelings, you might be listening to your own story. And if the story is not one that you like, and not one that you enjoy, and not one that you want to be a part of, then you can change the role that you play. Recognize and accept the role you have played so far and realize that you can turn the page of your story and become a new character in the next chapter. All right, that's all I have for now. So if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys.